our YouTube channel as well. So um, you might have to just click that, that there might be a little yeah. thing showing up on your screen to yeah. click that away. So hello, Gary. Hello, Robin. Hello, Julie. Hey. Welcome. Welcome to Virtual Warwick's. <laughs> Happy to be here. Oh, so glad to have both of you. Um, I'm going to just fill a little bit of your time, give uh, Facebook a chance to let everybody know that we're live. I don't want them missing any of the conversation between the two of you because I know it's going to be a great one. Um, so just real quick, a little bit about Warwick's for those that might not know where we're at and are maybe are watching from somewhere besides where we're located. We are in La Jolla, San Diego, California. And Gary and I were talking in the green room earlier about the longevity of independent bookstores. My little sign there says 1896. We are celebrating our, yeah, Robin, we're celebrating our 125th anniversary this year. So um, yeah, we've had some, we've had some good longevity. So all the upstairs, in fact, Robin, it's so funny because, um, you know, in the history of what Warwick's has seen in those 125 years, you know, a couple pandemics, a couple world yeah. wars, um, yeah. but they were, we found some old archives and they were talking about the advent of television, possibly destroying the book business. <laughs> We talk about how like ebooks and a few years ago we were all worried about ebooks destroying the book right. business. It's like I think we're okay. I think we're gonna be okay. Looks like it. Yeah. So um Gary, where are you um calling us at, calling in from? I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in an area called Laurel Canyon, which okay. is actually where much of my book is set. My main character lives in Laurel Canyon. So uh, we have that similarity and uh, it's a little overcast here. We're actually yeah. really beautiful today. Yeah. How about you, Robin? Where are you calling in from? Calling in from Hollywood, right near the Hollywood sign. Ah, we have well, I, go ahead. I'm yes. going to the Hollywood Bowl on Saturday with my daughters. Can't oh, wait. Happens. Who's playing? Yeah. It's not. It's the. Oh, I'm so. It's so silly. It's the Sound of Music sing along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Not silly at all. <laughs> it'll be really fun. I so, wonder how um, the, how the songs will sound through masks. I know that's what my daughters and I were cracking up. We're like, we're gonna sound really muffled. <laughs> But it'll be really fun. I grew up in the I grew up in the Palos Verdes, um, Rolling Hills area, so in the South Bay is where I grew up, and then moved down here. So, so we have the West Coast covered. Hopefully, some people from the East Coast might be watching with us too. But yeah, Robin and Gary are going to talk for about thirty minutes about um, Gary's book, The Last Birthday Party. Um, but if you had, I, what I'm going to do is in the um, comment section of Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube after, it's not live, but you can still come to Warwick's to order the book. Um, but in the comment section of Facebook, I'm going to put a link to that book. Um, easily to get, like I like to say, any way there is to get a book, you can get it from Warwick's. So um, we could ship it to you. But if you're in the San Diego area and you have an option to click pick up in store, we'd love to see it in the store. Um, also in that comment, so, go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. Support your local indie bookstore. Very important. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. while we'd love for you to buy the book from us, any indie that you're near, we would love for you to support them as well. We're kind of a good community of uh, businesses. We're not really competitors. Um, also in that comment section, if you have any questions for Gary or Robin, go ahead and put those into the comment section as well. We love questions that come in from the audience. I'll be bringing those to them after they're done with their conversation. So I've given, I think, Facebook enough time to let everybody know that we're here. So let me do my intros and then I'll toss it to you too. Thank you. So Gary Goldstein is an award-winning writer for film, TV, and the theater with more than 30 produced screen and stage credits. The New York native and longtime LA resident has also been a contributing film reviewer and arts feature writer for the Los Angeles Times since 2007. The Last Birthday Party is Gary's first novel. Joining him today is Robin Riker. Robin is a busy TV, film, and stage actress who has enjoyed regular roles on such series as Showtime's Brothers, Get a Life, and The Gregory Hine Show, and has had recurring roles on Days of Our Lives, The Bold and the Beautiful, General Hospital, Boston Legal, You're the Worst, and others. She has also made guest appearances on such shows as Murder, She Wrote, Six Feet Under, Big Love, and Last Man Standing, and has appeared in telefilms including Holly's Holiday, This Magic Moment, and Psycho Granny. I love the name of that one. I think I might have to go look up that one because I think <laughs> that one sounds fantastic. She has, <laughs> she has acted in feature films as John Sayles, cult classic Alligator and The Wedding Party, in addition to stage productions in New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Robin has also wrote the acclaimed book, A Survivor's Guide to Hollywood, How to Play the Game Without Losing Your Soul. I love that. 
<laughs> Anyways, you two have a great conversation. Okay. See you in about Thanks, a half Julie. hour. All right, I appreciate it. All right, big, big thanks to Julie and Warwick's for uh, hosting us. They've been incredibly generous and kind and coordinating all of this. We really appreciate it. Very important to support your local bookstore. For sure. Absolutely. Okay, so Gary. Yeah, so Robin. Last birthday party. There it is. There it is. Ooh. You don't know what we're promoting here. It's so fabulous, your book. Oh, thank you. As I, ha I read, literally, I read it in one sitting. I couldn't oh. put it down. It was so interesting and compelling. I kept going forward. There were surprises in every chapter. And so you wrote this during the pandemic. Is that how this came to be? Yeah, yeah. well, I started it uh, like two months before the pandemic um, and finished it, finished the first draft of it in July um, of last year and then did editing on it and then uh, got out to publishers and actually made the deal with the publisher by I think last November. So it was relatively fast, but but I but with the pandemic, and, and as a writer, uh, I, I'm in home most, I'm at home working most of the time, writing most of the time. So it's not, it, 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 my routine was not, you know, so different. So I was, but I really had a little more time uh, because film production was, was all standstill, nobody was making decisions. So I really had time to work on the book and get it done in a re reasonable amount of time, relatively fast uh, time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it it, uh, it it went pretty quickly, and and the book uh, actually came out yesterday. Yesterday was our our, our birthday, our publishing day, um, and that, that was really exciting. But it uh, came around really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are one of the people who really made use of their pandemic I did. lockdown. I did. I did my best. What I tried. I accomplished? And you have accomplished this little beauty. I love it. Yeah. Um, so when you, you know, I, I were friends and uh, I have had the pleasure of working with you before that I met you on the set of this magic moment right. on one fateful day. You don't visit yeah. sets very often, you said, but right. usually once or twice when they're shooting. Was, uh, I, I showed up on the set of this movie with the Hallmark uh, Channel movie uh, that we did in, I think, 2013, 2012, 2013. Um, and uh, I, I was, it was my first day going on the set to visit and Robin's last day working on the set, we're working on the movie. And it just was kismet. We met and became good friends and Robin's been gracious enough to be in a, a lot of stage readings I've done, uh, plays and screenplays and, and all that. And uh, she's a fantastic actress and uh, a wonderful writer herself. So, Thank so you. glad to, that you could uh, interview me for this. I am too. And I was reviewing the book again. And uh, your our meeting was as Joyce, your character's mother in the book, referred to as Beshert. It was Beshert. clearly meant to be. So, so, exactly. um, so you uh, when you were writing this, um, I love all your work, the the your wit and your your sensibility. And it seems very much as though you right to the, it's funny, but it's poignant, but it's also the human condition. Right, right. Well, the, you know, the, I, I, one of my favorite authors is, is um, Ann Tyler, and she wrote The Accidental Tourist, uh, Breathing Lessons, many, many, many books. And she is one of those authors who burrows in on something very small on the human condition. And not much happens in her books, but a lot happens emotionally in her books. And they're funny and touching and poignant and real. And I've been very inspired by her. There are three authors that have really inspired me and I think have kind of contributed to this book, whether they realize it or not, which is um, uh, Ann Tyler and Jonathan Tropper, uh, who's written, I think, eight really great novels. And they're all very human condition, uh, uh, just about guys, people, families, you know, who are just in the middle of some, the throes of something crazy going on in their lives. And he's He's a really terrific author. If people out there haven't read him. He's really wonderful. He wrote a book called This Is Where I Leave You, which was made into a movie oh, yeah. several years ago with Jane Fonda and Jason Bateman and, and huh. uh, uh, Tina Fey. Um, and so there's uh, uh, Ann Tyler, Jonathan Tropper, and Nick Hornby, who I love too. And Nick Hornby, who wrote about a boy and, and uh, uh, so many books. He's such a great writer. Also, they're about people kind of moving through strange parts of their lives, the unexpected parts of their lives, things happening to them. And they're about love, romance, work, growing up, growing old, all these things. And uh, so I've been really inspired by authors like that. Um, and so my approach to the last birthday party was really to take a look at what happens in sort of the middle of one's life. Um, and the choices that are kind of thrust that we make, but the things that are kind of thrust upon us that we don't expect. 
uh, at, a, at a given time. And Jeremy, my main character, uh, he has a 50th birthday party that he didn't want, but his wife made it for him. And they have a huge fight at the end of it. And uh, the next day she leaves him. And the whole story is about how he's visited by a series of calamities, three calamities, one after the other within the first 24 hours after his birthday party. And his life completely turns around, but ultimately in a very good way, in a very unexpected way. Um, and kind of the, the theme of it is how you never know what I say it in the, in the book, you never know what's going to happen every morning when you wake up. Um, and uh, and his and he, his life turns out in a way that he never expected. And I love that concept of, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen in life and you have to follow the path that's put in front of you. And sometimes it can it can really work out, which I won't give away any spoilers, but things things turn out well for Jeremy. Yeah. Surprises at every in, at every turn, actually. Yeah not just the calamities it, within right. all the chapters, something new happens. And this is speaking of within things, this is one of the things I love so much about the book as well. Jeremy's inner life. I, because it's, it's the way he reflects upon conversations that he's had or perceptions he's having at the moment right. and what someone else might be feeling or thinking or why if that should, is that what I should have said? It's very reflective, I think, of, of most thinking people's lives, you know, because right. and I found that to be just charming. It made me think of, of my behavior in certain situations. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, it, it, I didn't really know, I, I, I don't want to say I didn't know I was doing it when I was doing, writing it, but it, it really turned out that his inner, inner life and his inner voice became its own character in a way. Yes. And he, uh, I, people always ask me, is, are, is, are you Jeremy? Are, are, are you like this main character? And I, and I would say, no, we have, the, the externals are kind of similar, our work, where we live, things like that. But as people, the way we approach the world, it's, we're very different. But where we do really intersect is in how we kind of observe things and, and the kind of inner observations and the humor that, that kind of like the sort of like kind of wry humor that we, that we kind of bring to things and, and how he sees, sees everything. And, and so ultimately I ended up doing much more inner, inner thought of him as he's kind of, kind of uh, it, the book is, is written in third person, but a lot of it is just kind of how he observes the world and, and how the world is falling apart around him and then bring, coming back together. So it ended up being a style I didn't really, I didn't really know I had, but um, I think it works, works well for the book. You're very adept with that style. It's, it's, it's very Oh, good. adept. I love that word, adept. It's great. <laughs> I have other words, too. Maybe I know, I know. some of them in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I had a question. As you were writing this, aside from the pandemic descending upon us all, did anything surprise you as you wrote? Did you think you were going somewhere and then suddenly, oh, no, here's yeah, what I can honestly say I had a lot of surprises writing the book because I didn't, unlike with screenwriting um, and playwriting where I do a lot of outlining, I didn't do a lot of outlining for the book. I knew how I wanted to begin. I knew what I wanted to kick off the book. I knew kind of where I wanted it to be by sort of the midpoint, certainly how I wanted it to end. Um, but how it got there was a bit of a surprise along the way. And, uh, and which was fun because a lot of people who, who've been reading it say, wow, I'm really surprised by so much of what happens. I didn't expect the kind of twists and zigs and zags. And it was like, well, I didn't expect it either, but they, but they came out. So also when you write, the characters start telling you what to do in a weird way. And, and, and so I ended up with a lot more twists than I really expected. But um, a, a friend of mine, who's also a, a, an author, a really fine author, she said to me, I write what I think I would like to read. You know, which sounds kind of basic, but it's very true. It's like, what would you, what would you, if you were the, if you were the reader and you didn't know what was coming, what would you like to read next? What would you like to see happen? And and that was inspiring to me. Um, so yeah, I, I I hope people are are surprised by a lot of what happens, and it doesn't take a direct path. And as a romantic comedy, which ultimately it is, um, those can feel predictable, um, but it's ne it's it's really never in romantic comedies. I've written many many of them as movies. Um, it's never really about who's going to end up with who. You pretty much know what's going to happen. It's the journey that it takes to get there, which yeah. is really the most interesting part. People are definitely going to be surprised as they yeah. read. I hope so. I hope so. Um, there was another question I had. Um, 
the uh, the also the LA becomes a character in wow. the yeah. book, yeah. and there are one of the reflections that that Jeremy has at one point is on what and one day many things come in that he has to accomplish and they kind of pile in on one another and choices have to be made about what and um and there's a line where the Jeremy says yeah okay it's 30 minutes to Culver City right when does that ever happen in Hollywood right <laughs> right. right there's always traffic in LA in fact during the pandemic there was very little traffic and it was like enjoy it because oh. it's not going to be this way for long and mm -hmm. you could get anywhere in town in just in the normal amount of time and suddenly it was like Wow, our freeways really work well, don't they? Yeah, you know, when they're yeah, sitting, empty. <laughs> when they're empty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, LA is a. Uh, I mean, I, I love LA, and even though LA gets a bad rap about a lot of things, um, I've lived here a long time. I'm originally from New York, um, and uh, I, I love LA. Uh, we have problems, like every city does. We have some serious problems now, um, but as a place to live and be creative and to be inspired, I think it's it's a, a really wonderful city in, in so many ways. So a little bit, it's my love letter to LA, but it's also like a, it's also a very wry love letter to LA because there's a lot of eccentricity to the oh, city as well. And you can't take what happens here all that seriously. Uh, I mean, the serious things, yes, but they kind of the, the, the showbiz part of it and all that, you just have to sort of push through it and just find it entertaining. So I try to bring some, um, you know, some levity to, to what Jeremy sees around town and particularly as a screenwriter, ultimately when he, he ends up becoming a screenwriter uh, and the, the meetings he has to have and the interactions and his agent uh, who's very, who does a lot of agent speak, which is double speak um, and, uh, and, and trying to pre present that. But uh, also, I, like I said in the, in the uh, beginning, um, I live in Laurel Canyon. We've been living in Laurel Canyon a long time and it's a very specific part of Los Angeles. It's right kind of in the middle of everything, but it's kind of tucked away, it's up in the hills. Um, and Robin, where she lives, she doesn't live that far from us, but Robin, uh, she faces the Hollywood sign. We face kind of where Robin lives because we get this kind of very side view of the Hollywood sign. So it, it's it's um, uh, it, it's it's really in the city. It, and there's it's so eclectic in terms of where you can live and what your views are and 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 all of that. So I wanted to present that, and I and I have my main character living in Laurel Canyon. It's a bit of a love letter to Laurel, Laurel Canyon, a place that I really love living. Um, and uh, I, and. It's, yeah, and the city, and the city is kind of another character, for sure. Yeah, I liked it. The, I, there was something I wanted to say earlier when you were talking about writing and surprising. In stories that I have written, screenplays that I've written, I find myself writing something, and I'm not entirely sure why I wrote that. And then like eight pages later, I go, oh, because yeah. that happened. Right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, there are no accidents when you write. I mean, I, I always tell people because I'm I'm good about writing and then moving forward. And if it doesn't work, getting you know eliminating it, moving forward, trying start starting something new. And I always tell people just get it down on the page because anything on the page is better than nothing on the page. And then you can refine it from there. But to work, the mistake a lot of writers make, and I think it's just kind of our natural bent in doing it, is that you write and you want everything to be perfect before you move on. But what yeah, happens? is yeah, but you edit as you go. But what happens is you end up wasting so much, not wasting, but spending so much time uh, molding, crafting the words. And ultimately, when it's all said and done, you may lose that scene. You may lose those, that page, those moments. And you spent a lot of time crafting something that isn't even there anymore. So I think it's, I always find it's important to kind of do a sweep through what you write and then go back and, and edit that way. Um, yeah. and, and, and for me, it, it, I think it makes the writing more propulsive. I, I think the best thing somebody can say about anything I've written, whether it's a book or a screenplay or anything, is that I read it quickly. It moved. I, I, you know, I turned the page. I wanted to know what was happening. And part right. of that is how you edit things also. Um, right. I have to say my, my publishers did a fantastic job on the editing process of this book, which I really credit to the fast moving, how fast moving it is. Well, it, it, I agree with you. It was uh, so. I wanted to ask you that as well. So you write the book. You don't edit yourself as you go. You let everything come out, and then you go back and you see yourself. You cull right. what you don't feel fits, and right. then you turn it in. And uh, then your editors have a look at it, and they have their contribution. So it's a different kind of with stage. You collaborate with the director, with the actors. Um, the writer has a lot more 
sway in theater than in a lot of other areas where right right, right. Yes. um but this so you it was a different kind of collaboration in a way this being your first novel handing the baby over and right. and uh so i you say you were pleased with what they did was there anything there that surprised you about something you yeah, well it, it did because um it was it was a very collaborative process with this publisher and uh, to begin with, it wasn't like they just took it away and did what they needed to do with it. I mean, I was involved every step of the way with them, but they had ultimately over the course of several editors and proofreaders, it was a number of people. Um, but my book was was significantly longer when I turned it in and they ultimately said, you know, we'd like to cut X amount of words out of it, uh, get it down to a little bit more of, a, of what they call a book club read, a beach read, something that's a little bit shorter. Uh, they said, but everything works in the book, the story. We don't, we don't want to change anything in the story. We just want to kind of trim anywhere where you sort of go off a little bit because we get off track. And that was very, that was really interesting. And I'm like, fine, like, as long as I know I could see it. Because I, as somebody who's written many screenplays, I'm so used to rewriting and I'm so used to being asked to cut things. And I personally love it when I can take a screenplay down to, a, you know, a really tight 95 pages or 98 pages, you know, down from 120, it just, it moves so much faster. So, um, so they did a, um, they did a, an edit, the first edit, and we got it down considerably. Um, and it got to the place that they wanted it to be. And then I looked at the doc, they sent me a document. I, I, I went through the document. I saw all the changes and I agreed with literally 99% of the, of the changes. And in fact, there was one scene that I wrote, a very short scene, which I loved. Um, and I felt it was really a, a very, one of the, it was a funny scene. It was sort of very representative of LA and, and Hollywood, I felt. Um, and ultimately they were like, you know, we like that scene. It's really funny, but we think the tone's a little different. Think about it, maybe we cut it. It wasn't long, it was maybe a page. And I was like, no, I love the scene. I just, I, I, I totally, the scene is so important to me. And I read it and I reread it. And I looked at it and I said, you know what? They're right. It does, it stops the action. It, yeah. It's fun, but I'll use it in something else. I know. Say yeah. novel yeah. number two. <laughs> yeah, be right. yeah. I, I, you know, I've got a pile of everything I've ever, <laughs> I've ever had to edit out. Anything I like, I kind of repurpose. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was, a, the editing process was great. I, I loved it. And, and I think they did a great job. Um, uh, and again, very collaborative. So, um, the, uh, I, I just, I like it when you can make something, uh, just move faster and just be tighter and all of that. I mean, I read a lot of books, I read a lot of novels and sometimes they really go off. It, you know, there's just way too much description or way too much, I mean, for my taste, I, everybody's taste is different, but there's just way too much talk, way too much, it's just too much. And I look at them and I said, yeah, I wonder, you know, their editors said, this is this is too much. You could, and there are books that are longer. They don't have to be quite as long, but everybody's taste is different. You know, I, I as, a, as a writer, I, I feel like as a reader, I'm similar as I am as a writer. I like certain things in a certain way. Um, and uh, that's, you know, my bent, but um, yeah, I, I think um, I, my editing process was, was great. And, uh, and the, whole pro the, whole, the whole creative process with my publisher was terrific. That's wonderful to yeah. have that sort of relationship and you, yeah, have, yeah. you can have faith then, you know. Well, I can honestly say the writing of the book was a really joyous experience. I mean, just as a, as a writer, as a writing experience, I, I loved it. It was, it was so much fun. I'm very proud of the book. I, 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 I really feel like it, it accomplished what I set out to do. Um, so because, every, but then when, like anything, when you, when it leaves your hands, uh, you don't really always know what's going to happen, but here the, the, the part two of it, uh, including all of this and the marketing and everything has been so much fun and, and great. So uh, all, it was been all the totally great experience. All the wonderful comments from readers and authors who have right. read it mm -hmm. and, and uh, their response. It's very, I was amazed at how very, it was very rewarding. Yeah, I, I've, I've got so many authors really had so many nice things to say. It really, really meant a, a tremendous amount to me. Yeah. Now, uh, I've heard you mention um, before about how you have, you adapt to the market. You know, right. you started out, where did you start it? Did you start at Universal doing? I started off at the, I was a, 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 in marketing, movie marketing. Right. I was a, right. a, a low level executive in movie marketing. Um, and, uh, and then I sort of worked my, my way up. But at a certain point, I realized I kind of wanted to be on the other side of the creative table. So I left that world, and uh, which has actually served me really well as a writer, the, you know, understanding marketing, being able to, to yeah. understand you know, how to write for for a, a uh, you know for a, a market and for a, an audience. Um, but uh, then I became started writing in TV 
I started writing a, a, a sitcoms and some one hour shows, episodic TV. And then I expanded into writing screenplays. And then beyond that, started writing play, stage plays and moved into the TV movie world and really kind of expanded as I went along because they, you have to follow the opportunities. And all the opportunities really do feed upon, upon themselves anyway. You get good at one, one um, discipline of writing, then you uh, it, it improves you in another one. So learning how to write stage plays only helped my screenplay writing in its own weird way when I would go back to it. Writing the book has definitely helped screenplays and vice versa. I'm a journalist writing, right? So writing, uh, um, I write for the Los Angeles Times. So writing uh, newspaper articles was very informative for writing this novel. Um, but How so? Uh, I think, How so? Yeah. Oh, well, it was just because, you know, when you, I, I've done a lot of interviews, I've interviewed a lot of, a lot of people for the, the paper and, you know, you have to, you have to quote the people that you're, that you're writing about for, for an article. And so here in a, in a novel, you are quoting, you're writing dialogue, but you're writing, I'm very used to writing dialogue, but in a movie script, it, it's not, he said, she said, he thought, they thought, it's nothing like that, which is very much, which is much more similar to newspaper writing, uh, uh, that journalism. Um, so that was really helpful. Uh, and it's also the, the tightness of journalist, journalistic uh, work. It, you know, it's, it's very specific, very focused, few work, fewest, saying the most in the fewest amount of words. And that was, that's definitely was helpful here, as is in screenwriting, which is very much about uh, uh, showing and not telling and saying, saying a lot in a short amount of time, a short amount, because you, you know, you're counting the minutes basically in a, in a screenplay. Well, it seems to me that with your stage plays, uh, several of which I've read and um, uh, I saw I your wonderful- Participated in. And participated in. Um, April, May and June, I saw performed at the at Theater 40 here in LA, wonderful show. And um, you, it seems to me, having grown up in the theater myself from the time I was very young, um, that, the, you know, in the theater, it is, it's words, <laughs> you talk and you have relationships and, and things are explained, it's, they're not shown so much. And right. it seems that that would have been very beneficial for this novel because you're, you are telling a story in uh, a, a different way than a, than yeah. a yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, like I said, in, in a screenplay, it's, it's you, you, you show and not tell. Because basically you're kind of laying out a blueprint for what a director is going to bring to it, a cameraman is going to bring to it, your set designer, the actors. But for writing a, a play and, and, and really a book, you, it's, a, it's more about telling and not showing. You have to kind of bring, bring the reader or the audience into it and help them visualize things. But you as the author are really the camera. And, and so you have to do all, all of that work and you have to make sure. I mean, one of the, the most fun things, part of writing The Last Birthday Party was Annabelle, who's the, um, she's the occupational therapist who was brought in to help Jeremy after he has this terrible accident and he's in this enormous brace. Uh, it's a, called an abduction pillow. And it's just this gigantic thick sling over your shoulder and, and your arms out to here. And it's just, it's really awful. And he has to be in it for six weeks as he heals after this accident. And she comes in to, um, to help him learn as, a, as an OT, learn how to kind of just get around, get through his day and, sort through of, his, and through his door. <laughs> and through his door with his gigantic uh, things over his shoulder um, and, and under his arm and, and all of that. And of course, they end up falling for each other in this kind of unexpected way. Um, but that was, um, you know, that that part of it was really, um, uh, it, it was kind of that, I have to say uh, that, that it, yes, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy and I are very different, but I, did give Jeremy this, this accident, which is something that happened to me, where I had torn my rotator cuff very badly. And it was so bad that when I, after I came out of surgery, I woke up with uh, this, I was in this giant big brace, it was a, 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 an abduction brace, an abduction pillow. And the doctor said, I, I couldn't tell you that you were going to be in this before. I didn't know how bad it was going to be until we actually did the surgery, but it was really a bad tear and you really have to be in this, which means that you can't basically can't move your arm for six weeks. Um, and it has to be in one position. Only when you shower can you take off the brace. And that's just a nightmare. So uh, it was, a, it was quite a, lear a learning curve doing that, but I gave it all to Jeremy because it was, because in the end I learned so much and it was so authentic and there's so much visual, there's so much humor, but also like, it's so visual. 
Um, but it was a case where I was I was showing I, I was telling go back to showing and telling I was telling all of this to create, paint this picture of what it was like for him to you know get around for six weeks in this in this brace. Um, but I was also sh showing because I had to visualize what the brace would look like, and I wish I had a picture of myself in the brace because it was it was just you yeah. have to see. Yeah, I, I do. They're not very good. They they, they don't really. <laughs> Not not, a, not they're not very good of just like the brace and to get oh, a really good idea yeah, of what that means. But yes, yeah. yeah, so I gave it all to Jeremy. It was like if I'm going to go through this nightmare, I'm going to use it for something. And ultimately, exactly. ultimately, well, I, I, would, I was able to. Obstacles make for very good uh, plots, you know. Yeah, yeah, yes, for sure. So uh, yeah, so so, but again, the showing and telling is, is and that's a problem often in in uh, uh, in screenplays where where you are kind of. You're just telling you know you're you're telling too much. You're you're just you know we're supposed to see why a character is the we we're supposed to observe and see why a character is the way that they are as opposed to you know somebody saying you know the reason that you are the way that you are is because A B and C. It's really about showing and 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 uh, the kind of the layers of the onion um, un unpeeling so to speak. Right. Um, right. But yeah, it's a right. It's a they're both fascinating for screenwriting, playwriting. Uh, book writing, they're really each, I, I find them really fascinating processes. Well, um, one of the things too is that I, I mentioned it earlier, the, the adaptation of the market, you know, you as your career as a screenwriter and television writer evolved, you evolved with, okay, right. this is what the market wants, this is what's happening, and this choice to write the novel seems to be a, a, a departure from from adapting to what the market wants to relating to what it is that you want. Right, right, exactly. And 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 uh, IP, intellectual property, is is very is very important. Um, so uh, in, in in this world, and it doesn't even have to be uh, Spider Man or anything, a comic book or anything that everybody knows, as long as there is something that preceded it, and like a book, um, and particularly if the book gets read and does well. Um, get some attention, then you can bring that in and say, I'd like to do a movie or a, TV, a limited series or something from this. It exists. Somebody else, some other entity has taken a flyer on your work and, and it has proven right. successful. And it just sort of uh, primes the pump a little bit. And right. uh, I didn't I didn't write the book for that purpose per se, but I, I do know that, that it will help that process. And as a screenwriter, obviously, I would, if, any, if it moved anywhere, I'd love to be able to to do the adaptation, of course. Oh yeah, I think it, I think it would make a wonderful film. And you're right, having having someone else having taken a flyer on it, you know, right. and publishing it and getting it out there um, is a wonderful thing. Because in the business part of show business, nobody really wants to be the first one <laughs> to right. do. Nobody it. wants to take a chance, exactly. And yeah, yeah. Oh, I think Julie's coming back with a question. Hey, Julie. Hello. Hi, that hello. was such a great Welcome conversation. Back. And Robin, Thank you did a great job. It got everybody like excited to read. Oh, the good. Book, so yay. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got some great comments for you, Gary. Um, Lynn yeah. Rosenberg says, Sister Lynn is watching you, bro. You rock. <laughs> That's my sister. My sister, who is also a, a writer too. She, she, uh, we actually, two of us really need to do some something together. We need to do a, a one of these together because she has a book that's out now as well. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, glad you're out there. Hello. <laughs> and Randall said he bought the book yesterday and finished it today. Great job. <laughs> laughed out loud. So oh my god, fast yes. reader. Thank you, Randall. I know. I love it. So Barbara has Thank a you. question. So she wants to know: Did you have writer's block at any point? And if so, what did you do to overcome it? Great question. I will say something controversial. Um, and I've said it before, I, I'm not a big believer in the concept of writer's block per se. It's a word, it's words, a, it's a, a term that we use. Um, and I say that, and I don't never mean to, to um, undermine uh, anybody, anybody's process or what they feel, because we all feel as writers, everybody goes through something different. Uh, but I, I find that the concept of writer's block is really more not knowing what it is you want to write. And this happens a lot when people, now I, I, I'm gonna contradict myself, but earlier on I said that, um, uh, that I did not outline, do an outline for the last birthday party. Um, but I, I normally do outline scripts and things. And that uh, helps avoid the concept of writer's block or, or just feeling like you, don't, you, you can't move forward or you don't know what to do next. It's really not because you, are, you, you have stopped yourself. Um, it's really because you don't know what you wanna write. And I think when I, I really, uh, um, uh, I really recommend the concept of outlining if you ever feel that. It's very, very, it's so much 
uh, better to move to, to get back down to writing when you know what it is that you're going to write next. If you feel like you're somebody who may get stopped at a certain point, so I, I'm a big believer in, in outlining, uh, not sitting down to write until you're really sure what it is that you want to say in that scene or that chapter. Uh, personally, I didn't have any writer's block with this. There were certainly times where I would have to sort of stop and say, okay, what do I want to do next? I had to make choices, and what I do, and this may this may help anybody with writer's block or whatever you want to call it, um, make a list of three things. Give yourself three choices. I don't know what I want to do in this next moment. Okay, I can do A, I can do B, I can do C. Start writing A. If it doesn't work, go back, start writing B. If that doesn't work, start writing C. And one of those three is probably the right way to go. So give yourself a couple of choices. Uh, and I will say, as a writer, always be good to yourself. If you're feeling blocked, if you're feeling unmotivated, whatever it is, walk away, do something fun, experience something in the world and come back and you'll probably come back with a fresh perspective. So, but thanks for the question, Barbara. Because I think that it's one of those things that people, um, sometimes you have to get away from it for a minute for it to kind of yeah. like sink in and figure out like, you know, let it, Absolutely. let it mull around there a little bit to figure out yeah. where you're going to go next. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's process is different. I, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm happy to talk about my process, but I, just just because something works for me doesn't it's gonna doesn't mean it's gonna work for somebody else. But if I can impart anything that I've learned all my years of writing to help people get past some of the the blocks or the obstacles or the problems, I always feel like I really want to do that and give back to it because I've had plenty myself. I just I've just found different ways to to handle it that have worked for me. Do you um and Robin, you're a writer too, correct? You, yeah. And, and so do you both write every day, no matter what, or do you take days off? I'm very jealous of Gary because he is very disciplined. I am much less disciplined. I write something every day, but I haven't dedicated myself to a particular project. I keep thinking about it. I know what I want to start next, um, but I just haven't started it yet. And that's the hardest thing is getting my ass in the chair. Once I'm in the chair, I go and go and I, and I love it. But you're kind of busy with some other things too, so. <laughs> you other things. But the, but the other thing that I wanted to say to Gary's point about if you do get stuck, and I think this is true in any walk of life, any anything, if what you're doing doesn't feel like you are moving forward or, or benefiting in any way, do something else for a little while. Just mm -hmm. do something else. Go for right. a walk. Make cookies. Right. Or, right. Write a poem. Do, Clear your head. Because yeah, you come yeah. back, you come back with a different perspective. Right. I liken it to, you know, if anybody does crossword puzzles, you sit with a crossword puzzle and you just stop. You're just stuck. You can't do any more. You walk away, you come back a few hours later. If you've done something else, it like all, it all shows itself. So Be same with <laughs> Right. I know, yeah. And isn't it so weird when that happens? Because it's like, how yeah. come I didn't think of this before? It's like right. such, exactly. an, odd, there it is. such an odd thing. I think too, these days, we are, our brains are so overloaded where the hard drive is just jammed with everything new things coming in all the time all the time and we tend to criticize ourselves if we're not constantly on top of everything and someone once said that if you you know about memory or lo loss or dementia or whatever it is if you if you can't find your keys that's one thing if you forget what keys are for that's <laughs> that's another thing i love that that's a really good one Okay, I have a quick question and then we're gonna probably need to wrap this up. Um, okay. Was the last birthday party always the working title? Oh, good no. question. Good question. No, it, it was. It had another title, which I liked. And it, uh, it was a more of a little more ethereal uh, title, something that could have applied to a lot of things. I felt, I, but I liked it. It, was, it, it. To me, it worked. The problem with that title was it was hard to remember. And it was one of those titles that you could confuse with something else or, or whatever. So. The, publishing, uh, the publishers said, look, we like that title. If you want to stick with it, it's fine. Um, but let's try to think, let's try to get some, some options. And we came up with a bunch of things. And ultimately, I, I came up with Last Birthday Party. And you, you know, it's not, it's, it's not his last birthday party ever, but it is the, his last birthday party before he moves on with the rest of his life. And ultimately, it turned out to be a, a great title and, and, uh, and, and really worked. And I, I, bring, I bring the phrase in at the, end of the, at the end of the book as well. So it worked out well. May I add that yeah. 
as I, I said earlier, and many people have said in their comments about the book, that it's a surprise at every page. And that's the first surprise, because when you see the title, The Last Birthday Party, you go, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's the thing is like it kind of has that mixed sort of messaging that's going it. on. Yeah. Right. yeah. Is it good? Is it bad? Yeah. 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 Love that. So, Robin, are you active on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram? Do you have where people can follow you and see what's going on in your yeah. world? On on at Robin underscore Riker, I think. <laughs> I don't I don't Facebook myself very much, but Twitter, it's Robin Riker. And uh, I have a website, uh, RobinRiker.com. Easy to remember. Perfect. And we will be hoping to see something new from you coming writing, hopefully soon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. absolutely. And then we'll and then we'll have the opposite happen. We'll have Gary right. interview I'm, you. I'm legend Robin, absolutely. I'm oh, there. good. I love it. <laughs> I love that. And then Gary, for anybody out there, where's the best way for them to be in touch and find out more about what you're working on? And yeah, working please on. do. I just follow me. I'm on uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I have an author page on Facebook. Uh, on uh, Twitter and Instagram, I'm Gary Goldstein LA. Um, on Facebook, uh, you just have if you find you just search for me and search my author page, you'll find it. And I have a website, GaryGoldsteinLA.com, has all the info about my book, other things I've worked on, my bio. You can contact me through that. Please do. Love to hear what you have to say about the book or any other books or anything else. Your writing questions, any way it can help. And, I, and I you'll do love. and you'll zoom into book clubs too, right? I will zoom into book clubs. I, uh, if you're in LA, I'll come in person and bring Love cookies. Uh, yeah. and, uh, Wait, who's yeah. bringing the wine? <laughs> I don't know. I'll bring it to Robin will. We're a team now. <laughs> you guys are a team. I'll, I'll drive up from here. Absolutely. We make a good team. <laughs> and so, yeah. I, I should have asked this before, though. Um, and I always, this is always one of those questions when you ask an author, you're on like the day after release day, but it's like, are you working on another book? Are you, do you see that in oh, your well, future? I I am. I, I'm actually almost done with my second novel. It's a, uh, I've got, I'm really a couple of chapters away. Um, and it's a very different sort of book. It's a family story. It's, it's much more serious. Um, the guy, it's a, another guy story, with a, but he's got a very deep inner life also is the way it turns out. I get that might be my style, but, um, but uh, uh, it's, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, I'm hoping to finish it very soon and edit it and get it out there somehow. Yeah. So, uh, so I've been working on that all all through the the marketing and getting getting less birthday party out to the world so i know it's all you gotta wear a bunch of different hats when you're yeah, in this i love it though here. love doing that love it well this was a great conversation thank you thank gary you. for your time robin thank you for your time it was wonderful you, having both of you thank you um, right. when i close the meeting we go away so it was nice meeting both of you and um best of luck to everybody good night thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.